because of the sacrifice of our beloved Redeemer, death has no sting. The grave has no victory. Satan has no lasting power. And we are begotten again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We must never lose our sense of awe and profound gratitude for the eternal sacrifice of the Son of God. It is sacred and it is holy, for it was through this great and last sacrifice that Jesus the Christ brought salvation to all those who shall believe in his name. I marvel to think that the Son of God would condescend to save us as imperfect, impure, mistake-prone, and ungrateful as we often are. I have tried to understand the Savior's atonement with my finite mind, and the only explanation I come up with is God loves us deeply, perfectly, and everlastingly. I cannot even begin to estimate the breadth and length and depth and height of the love of Christ. A powerful expression of that love is what the scripture often call the grace of God. The divine assistance and endowment of strength by which we grow from the flawed and limited beings we are now into exalted beings of truth and light until we are glorified in truth and know all things. It is a most wondrous thing, this grace of God. Yet it is often misunderstood. Grace unlocks the gates of heaven. Even if we were to serve God with our whole souls, it is not enough, for we would still be unprofitable servants. We cannot earn our way into heaven. The demands of justice stand as a barrier, which we are powerless to overcome on our own. But all is not lost. The grace of God is our great and everlasting hope. Because our beloved Savior gave himself a ransom for all, an entrance into his everlasting king kingdom is provided unto us. The gate is unlocked. Another element of God's grace is the opening of the windows of heaven through which God pours out blessings of power and strength, enabling us to achieve things that otherwise we would be far beyond our reach. It is by God's amazing grace that his children can overcome the undercurrents and quicksands of the deceiver rise above sin and are perfected in Christ. Though we all have weaknesses, we can overcome them. Indeed, it is by the grace of God that if we humble ourselves and have faith, weak things can become strong. When we kneel to pray, is it to replay the greatest hits of our own righteousness? Or is it to confess our faults, plead for God's mercy, and shed tears of gratitude for the amazing plan of redemption? Salvation cannot be bought with the currency of obedience. It is purchased by the blood of the Son of God. Thinking that we can trade our good works for salvation is like buying a plane ticket and then supposing we own the airline or thinking that after paying rent for our home, we now hold title to the entire planet Earth. If grace is a gift of God, 
Why then is obedience to God's commandments so important? Why bother with God's commandments or repentance for that matter? Why not just admit we're sinful and let God save us? Or to put the question in Paul's words, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Paul's answer is simple and clear. Brothers and sisters, we obey the commandments of God out of love for him. Gives us all the more reasons to love and obey our Heavenly Father with meekness and gratitude. As we walk the path of discipleship, it refines us, it improves us, it helps us to become more like Him, and it leads us back to His presence. Therefore, our obedience to God's commandments comes as a natural outgrowth of our endless love and gratitude for the goodness of God. This form of genuine love and gratitude will miraculously merge our works with God's grace. The prophet Nephi made an important contribution to our understanding of God's grace when he declared, for we know that it is by grace that we are saved after all we can do. However, I wonder if sometimes we misinterpret the phrase, after all we can do. We must understand that after does not, equal, does not equal because. We are not saved because of all that we can do. Have any of us done all that we can do? Does God wait? until we have expended every effort before he will intervene in our lives with his saving grace? Many people feel discouraged because they constantly fall short. They know firsthand that the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. They raise their voices with Nephi in proclaiming, my soul grieveth because of mine iniquities. I'm certain Nephi knew the Savior's grace allows and enables us to overcome sin. The gates of heaven are unlocked. The windows of heaven are opened. Today and forevermore, God's grace is available to all whose hearts are broken and whose spirits are contrite. The Spirit of the Lord our God brings about such a mighty change in us that we have no more disposition to do evil, but to do good continually. But the grace of God does not merely restore us to our previous innocent state. If salvation means only erasing our mistakes and sins, then salvation, as wonderful as it is, does not fulfill the Father's aspirations for us. His aim is much higher. He wants his sons and daughters to become like him. It leads to heights we can scarcely comprehend. It leads to exaltation in the celestial kingdom of our Heavenly Father, where we, surrounded by our loved ones, receive of His fullness and of His glory. All things are ours, and we are Christ's. Indeed, all that the Father hath shall be given unto us. To inherit this glory, we need more than an unlocked gate we must enter through this gate with a heart's desire to be changed. A change so traumatic that the scriptures describe it as being born again. Yea, born of God, changed from our worldly and fallen state to a state of righteousness, being redeemed of God, becoming his sons and daughters. 
Jesus Christ has cleared the way for us to ascend to heights incomprehensible to mortal minds. I pray that we will see with new eyes and a new heart the eternal significance of the Savior's atoning sacrifice. I pray that we will show our love for God and our gratitude for the gift of God's infinite grace by keeping his commandments and joyfully walking in a newness of life. In the sacred name of our Master and Redeemer, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.